What's up guys, this is Nick from March City Poker, and in today's video, I'm going to be continuing the How to Beat Live Low Stakes Poker series with today's topic covering straight draws. I, I looked back through a lot of my videos, and I don't think I have anything specific on straight draws. It'll be a quick video, but there's a couple quick little points I want to make about them, uh, especially as far as live low stakes games go. So, know the strength of your straight draw before you do decide to take your action. Uh, for example, 10-9 on 8-7 deuce is much stronger than 6-5. With 10-9, you can make the nuts with the 6 or the jack. If you hit a 10 or 9, then you have top pair plus your draw. With 6-5, though, if you hit your pair, you're often not that good at showdown. You also could have some reverse implied odds if a 9 does come in and you're drawing dead against a person that does have jack-10. So be a little careful with your open-enders that are on the bottom end, and the top ones, I think, can be played a little more aggressively. I think to... I guess as far as how aggressive to play straight draws, gutters usually fit in pretty well uh, as far as balancing out your value raising ranges. I would be a little more aggressive with gutters. Just like with the open enders, if you have overs in a gutter, that's going to be a lot stronger than some kind of gutter where you don't have overs or just one over, obviously. I would tend to be a little more aggressive with gutters, though. I see players just calling with gutters too often. I also see players flashing gutters on flops where... They just say, you know, I have a gutter, I'm not going to chase. I don't think it's correct in poker to just chase and try to call down. The problem is a lot of times when I see them fold these hands, their opponent has C-bet on a board that they do not represent a lot of value hands on. So I think the most important takeaway of this video is when you are considering how aggressive or how passive to be with a straight draw, you want to keep in mind your range and how it hits the board texture and your opponent's range and how it hits the board texture. And obviously you want to keep that in mind every hand that you play. But for example, let's say that your opponent opens in early position and you call and your heads up and the flop comes ace king three and you have jack 10 and he C bets pot into you. This is probably not a spot that you want to get aggressive with your gutter simply because you don't represent nutish hands that well. You don't have top set or middle set or top two hardly ever. And your opponent has led with a sizing that will lead us to believe that he's very polarized and he represents nutish hands very well. So this is not a spot that I would say, or I would just, you know, go into your next session and say, oh, well, Nick said get aggressive with gutters. That's a spot where you have to determine how deep are you? Is your opponent the type to stack off or uh, overcommit with a hand like ace queen or ace jack on that board maybe especially the deeper you are and, and really determine your implied odds and if you do spike a queen on the turn then you know how often are you getting paid off are you getting paid off handsomely because then calling's the only option and raising's not uh, the best option now let's say it's the same exact scenario except you have jack 10 and the board is nine seven deuce and your opponent C bets into you. Even if he C bets, uh, you know, something closer to pot, yeah, the sizing's a little more polarizing, but he's gonna be a little more heavy with air in combos that missed, simply because if he doesn't have an overpair, then everything else pretty much missed. And on that nine high flop texture, when he bets, then you can get aggressive with your overs and your gutter, and it'll play a little bit better than a call, I think. Yes, a call is reasonable. I think it's arguable. I think a lot of Pros and coaches might argue that you can definitely mix in some calls, but I think as far as what you should do most of the time, in my opinion, I always tell my students and viewers you probably want to be a little more aggressive in these spots where you lack showdown value, but more importantly, you're attacking a range that is misrepresenting his hand, essentially. Like, he he's missing more often than not. So keep in mind ranges. Be a little more aggressive with gutters. Keep in mind the strength of your straight draws as far as open enders. If you're on the top end of it, that's going to be a much more, uh, that, that draw is going to have much more strength to it than the bottom end. You can mix in, I think, some flats with open enders. 
and especially when you don't feel like you rep a lot of value hands. And I say this specifically because I think as far as low, like live low stakes games go, the difference between like an open ender and a flush draw is that flush draws are very visible even to the most incompetent opponents. And in live low stakes games, a lot of times players will overfold to that turn completing flush card and you won't have the implied odds to just call. You probably want to play your hand in a little more of an aggressive manner, whereas with open enders, even though I suggest being aggressive with it most of the time, especially if your opponent does not rep a lot of value hands and you can rep some value hands, that's kind of the bonus uh, side of that. I think that you might actually have more implied odds uh, than you think often because straight draws are very hidden, especially to players in live low stakes pools. So if you guys have any questions or comments or want to add anything more about this topic, go ahead and let me know. Until next time, this is Nick from Arch City Poker. Take care.